Yeah. Good evening. I'd like to call the Thursday, December 19th, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. To my far left is uh, Justin Lawrence, Flo Smith. To my right is Jeremy Hansen. I'm Brad Town. With us also is uh, Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I have no additions or changes. Uh, any public comment? Hearing none. Um, treasury report. Okay. Um, I did not have the tax sale that was scheduled for last Thursday. At the last minute, they were able to come up with the money, so that worked out very well for us. I've also given the November budget status report, trial balance, and delinquent tax notes to select board. Anything else I have is in, on the agenda. Okay. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 20G11, that checks 19823 through 19860 in the amount of $35,539.33. Also general fund accounts payable warrant number NSB 20-20 ACH in the amount of $5,970.53 uh, for the payment for the 2015 truck. Also payroll warrant number 20-12 for payroll from November 24th, 2019 through December 7th, 2019, in the amount of $53,076.35. Also, November reconciled bank statements for the General Fund, Sewer Commission, and Water Division. Also, the November general journal entries and tax admin adjustments. <coughs> Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Clarissa Holmes, Vermont Appraisal Company. Yes. Uh, well, this is an annual event, and it's the first time I've been here for it. Um, if if we have any, when we after we lodge the grand list, uh, the in and send out the tax bills in July, um, if there's any errors in that grand list, um, due to well, changes that we didn't we're supposed to do, we didn't do, or anything. <laughs> Not value changes, not coming into appeal, but errors, mistakes. Um, we are allowed to change them up till the end of the year, but uh, we have to get the approval of the select board. So uh, this year we have uh, four changes, and I'll go over them briefly and then answer any questions you might have. Uh, three of them were personal property accounts where the business has had gone, is no longer here. And uh, Diane and takes care of that. didn't tell me. Yeah. They didn't tell you until they probably got the bill. And then they realized right. that they should have yeah. said something. So those three were pre pretty standard. Uh, there was one that was a mobile home that had been uh, moved out of town. And we didn't know it. We didn't find out it was moved out of town until after we would lodged the grand list and sent out the tax bill. So um, the three personal property accounts, um, one was 7000 one was 1600 and one was 2500 And those went down to zero because they're no longer in town. The mobile home was valued at $4,400, and that's gone, so that went down to zero. So that's it was the assessment and that is nothing. The fourth one was um, uh, a couple that came to us. They actually came to us before April 1st. And um, in the shuffle of getting the grand list done, we overlooked their issue. And they did get to us before April 1st and we should have dealt with it, but we didn't. And we were able to resolve it, but uh, because it was after the tax bills went out, then we uh, have to deal with that. It is an error because it was our mistake. It should have been number four. And it was a piece of land that was purchased in 2016. And we assessed it like we normally do. It's 40 acres 
uh, on Chase Road. Normally, we would assess it as a building lot, two acre site, and the rest would be additional land. Well, in the deed, uh, it's, it's, I have a copy of the deed if you want to see it. Apparently, the um, seller retain the right, retain the development rights on the piece which means that the new owner can't build on it <laughs> until he can negotiate to get those development rights we didn't know this until he brought the deed in and so um, he only paid he paid 15,000 for the property for the 40 acres so when we realized it we read over the deed it's definitely clear that um, the, the seller did not convey the development rights. He just conveyed the 40 acres and a couple of ca uh, old camps. So what we did was we reclassified the land and took off the building site because he cannot build on it. So it's all the 40 acres was originally assessed at 98.3 and now we've uh, brought the assessment down to 41.4, which reflects just 40 acres, which can't does not have a building site on it. Going forward, he I guess he's trying to um, negotiate with the heirs to get uh, get the development rights back. And if he does that, we will know because he will have to file another deed, and it will come through our office. So. Um, should this change, we can we can um, put the building site back on. But you know, because he came to us before April first, we felt we had to do it. Can we assess for development rights? Um, That's my question. We yeah. can. Um, I mean, it, when like uh, in a when somebody puts a conservation easement on a piece of property and they sell the development rights to um, the land trust, land or, trust something like or something. Yeah. Typically, an appraisal is done, and it and it will establish a value for those development rights. In this case, um, what the, the simplistic assessment approach was just to take off the building site because this reflects the fast fact that he's just got 40 acres of land that he really can't put a house on. Mm -hmm. How, how, how developable is the land? Uh, it's not a great piece of land, apparently. I didn't go look at it. Tom went to look at it. Um, but we, when we reduced it to the 41.4, we let him know that, and, and we had to give him time to appeal it, and he didn't. So even though he paid 15 for it, um, apparently the 41.4 was, was acceptable to him, and he felt it was fair that we took off the... The building site. I think it's close to where the road turns to a class four. At the top. Uh, I'm not. As I said, I um, didn't go to look yeah. at it. Uh, Tom was the one that went out and met him. Um, so, still doesn't seem logical to me that like you can. Why would you want to buy land that you can? I don't know well, why. No, why? How could? I mean, it seems like a great way to reduce your property tax bill. I'll just. You know, like not. I don't. I don't understand. I think well, it's an unusual thing that it's, someone. I've never seen mean, anything you know, like it. I've so been, the value of the land is yeah. worth less. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but so so the the person who retains the the, pro, the yeah. building rights yeah. is not getting assessed. Well, that's what. That's right. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Because right. so he technically, I guess theoretically we should, but I'm not sure how to do that because the development rights are. Well, it looks like sort of intangible. You reduced it by fifty-six thousand right. nine hundred. So yeah. that would, if the value prior yeah. was yeah. ninety-eight thousand three hundred, I would think the simple approach would be that if all of a sudden. The so so so, Justin, you could sell me your your property. <laughs> go ahead and build, do the development or whatever. I'm only going to be paying half, and you just just cover it. That would be a great <laughs> question for Ted. Yeah, but you're just saying you're correcting this because right the man now came in we before. have to correct it for uh, the fellow that bought it because he didn't get the development sure. rights. I'm not sure how we would set up a parcel to assess the fellow that still or the heirs that still own it because I guess I, I'm not sure. Well, because because they still own the building site. 
they own the development rights. I mean, I'm not sure if they did. If we assess them, <laughs> sent them a tax bill, anything, how would we yeah. how would we back up the bill? I guess taking it a step well, further. So um, it's a very unique situation. I, I have n in, you know, in my 25 years of doing this, I've never seen it. Uh, so well, just from what they've done is they they've uh, managed to reduce the value of the land with no cost to them, or it's, it's just going to cost us. It's just it will cost us the town. Right? The town, right? So why would we reduce? I just, I don't understand. Well, we can't really assess the owner of the land now, the fellow that bought it, because he can't build on it. So, yes, so we're, just, uh, we're just approaching it from our assessment on the land. You're removing so, the building lot. Yeah, the building part. site on yes, it. And okay. we're just assessing the land as 40 acres that a, a is unbuildable. Land. Residual land. Yeah, you're removing yes. the value of that. Yes. I get that. Uh, so, so we... That's the only thing we could deal with on this parcel. Um, as I said, I'm not sure the mechanics of how you would capture the development rights. I'd have to ask. Well, even before that, what gave you the idea to say, okay, well, then we, I guess since you don't own the development rights, that land's worth less than how did you, I mean, you, I get you took that figure off, but I mean, how did it, was there a standard that you followed or is there another, I mean, obviously it's new. You said there's not somebody else that's done this before right. or a reference for yeah. you. So how did you come up with the idea of doing it that way? Well, it would be, it's the same way we handle other parcels that have no, that cannot be built on. I mean, if you had a piece of property that you could prove to us that you could not build on um, through an engineering study, um, sometimes we will do it if, if um, you have a house in Montpelier and then you have a little piece of land, your residual land is in Berlin, we would not, the state law says we can't put a building site on that residual land because the house is in Montpelier. So we would do that for that piece. Any piece that is, can't really be built on, and we would have proof that it can't be built on, we would assess it as we call other land or land other than the two acre building site. And that's pretty much the standard. It's the way we do it all the time. And this, so this was really the only way we could do it. And it's handling it the same way we would handle other properties in town. So you have another property, for example, and you would have a two-acre building site, and you right. have an assessment for that. And then they have <coughs> ten other acres, right. and you have, right. and you have that residual assessment. So you're just using the residual. Yeah, assessment. we're just saying yeah. that that this is land that is not a building site. Right. It is unusual. And I, as I said, I've never seen it before. Um, I, at least, I, if, if he does resolve this, he will have to do and execute another deed. And we will know about it. So my thought was, well, it's not like he can all of a sudden decide, uh, okay, they're going to give me the building rights back and I can just put a house on it. It's going to have to go through the town clerk and a, and a deed and that then if that happens then we can put the building site back on but it's it's the only mechanism we had in the assessing <coughs> office to do this so that's if we file that if we put the meat on file right away for that change right if and theoretically could they our attorney do us and not put the deed on file with the, the, the rights to this they, on file they for could, years and years and years? They could, but then if they want to build, they'd have to go get a building permit. So then they'd have to put it and, on file at that point. Yeah, so, so then they once, they, once they got to the building permit, you know, state, then we would definitely know about it. But my thought is if, if this fella does manage to negotiate these development rights back, he's going to record it probably pretty quick because they'll probably be afraid they'll change your mind again. <laughs> this might go to Rob. I mean I understand mm -hmm. the I understand the land trust, but they're registered. Whereas this is an individual and this is a very odd thing. I I you know, I think that it's a good question to I figure do think out. It's so, a good question. Um yeah. I I'll I'll have you ask um Ted okay. first. 
just see what he suggests because yeah. I've dealt with properties that have retained mineral rights before right and it's a similar type thing mm -hmm. but it's getting the right assessment mm -hmm. how do you bill for something that is an intangible right is it and yeah. and be able to bill and collect taxes on right. an intangible thing that can you put a that lien Diane on it can't if they do a don't, tax sale on it. Yeah, yeah, that you can't yeah. do a tax sale. Yeah. So that's where it gets sort of sticky on that yeah. development right yeah. end. Yeah. Well, perhaps Rob would like to make case law. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that on my list. <laughs> but uh, how much money are you for errors and omissions is the total with your... Um, uh, well, it's... Is it money or is it assessment? It's a, uh, We're talking assessment. We're not talking money. Thank you. Yeah. So... It was sixteen hundred plus twenty five hundred plus seven thousand plus fifty six nine. That's the big one. Okay. And that's assessing assessment dollars, not tax dollars. So you would divide it by a hundred. Yep. Okay. Got something wrong here, okay. So we're saying 68,000? Divided by 100. So you're asking the board to approve <coughs> the money, though? Just the uh, just the, the change in the assessment. Our, our E&O form from the state says that the select board needs to approve the fact that we're making these changes. Okay. After the grand list was lost. Did you add that up, Diane? 654. 65,400 and divide that by 100 and multiply by 5508, is it? Yeah. Or, or actually, no, what's the total rate? Times um, 5, 5, with, 5, the yeah. oh, with the school. Oh, with the school. Yeah, 22, well, non residential, non -residential yeah. 2.0945. I'll be like thirteen hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Okay, that's what I thought. Something around there. Well, it's certainly better than the electrical transmission lines we had a couple of years ago. Um. <laughs> and I will. I mean, we'll check into the development rights on our end uh, with with Ted, the head of the company, to see if he's run into it before because he's been doing this a lot longer than the rest of us. What was that total again, Oh, I didn't. Thirteen nineteen. Twenty one thousand three hundred ninety. So we're looking for a motion to to accept the changes that that As uh, we have have to make okay. yes before the end of the year. Okay, yeah. and then we will. And then the, we need the signature of the select board, and then it goes to Rosemary to okay. file with the town clerk. Okay. And we'll file with her. I hear a motion. I move to accept the changes as presented. I second the motion. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. There are three sec three places for select board members to sign, so I'll let you decide how you fit five people in there. We need to authorize the select board chair to sign on our behalf. Hmm. Your second? Second that motion. Are all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. To fill in your <laughs> they can write big now. Okay. <laughs> so be sure you mention to Rosemary that they authorize Brad to sign on behalf of the town because she will ask you about that. Oh, she will. Yeah. If she only sees one signature, she's, yeah. she's yeah. going to, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Gerson. Okay, I'll leave this for right now. Yep. Uh, and you just write questions? a note. That, oh, yeah. Um, any other questions for me? Or? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> any, um, what's going on in the assessing department? Anything that you can think of that's exciting and new and, no. um, you know? No. We're just starting, we're working on the grand list for next year, basically. Mm -hmm. The uh, transfers and the subdivisions. Um, 
in. Basically, that's what we're trying to get ahead of it. Um, get an early start on it. Do you think that the um, update of the mobile homes worked out as well as we hoped? Um, I think it did. We we had a couple complaints, but not I'm, a couple grievances. A couple people just came in and wanted an explanation. I mean, at least now we know what's there for each ho for each house. I mean, there were some that there were new homes there we didn't know about. Uh, things got replaced. Um, things were uh, updated, <laughs> and somehow some of them had not been taken care of, and they were in great disrepair. So um, it brought, I think, more equity to the overall, you know, situation with the mobile homes. So I think that was the big thing, is we were able to pick up that type of thing. Clarissa's done a lot of work. Um, the tax maps are up to date, which is nice. Um, we've been doing that every year. Um, and we appreciate having you here. We are. Yeah. I'm, I am working with Corinne on the exempt properties. We, we want to review them all to, to um, apparently she said the state's using different parcel IDs for theirs and we got different parcel IDs and this and the the tax department doesn't really pay a lot of attention to these because they aren't taxable mm -hmm. so we're we're gonna go be going ahead and just reviewing everything just try and make sure the list is accurate it would be nice if you found something that can be taxable uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's anything there <laughs> I looked over it briefly All right, I'm just giving you your yeah. marching orders <laughs> okay. um, other than that, there's nothing really, you know, that's about it as we're going forward. Okay? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Marissa. Uh, draft audit received. Yep. Okay. Um, I think you all have a packet as well. I just thought I'd go through a few things that are in the audit. Uh, we're going to have, I th hopefully it'll be the next meeting that we will have Linda Mullen coming from the um, from Father Gill and Sigali, mm -hmm. and then she will talk in a little bit greater depth, but I just wanted to point out a few things to you. So I'll just tell you some of the page numbers and it shouldn't take that long. So on page three, okay, and that would be uh, the one that has the table of contents on it. Okay, if you look under fund statements, the first thing it says is that the general fund reported an increase in fund balance of $139,991. And of course, we had a lot of expenditures last year. And if you go to the next to the next section, it will explain what those were. On page eight, the top, top paragraph, it says, uh, other revenues exceeded budget due to insurance proceeds received as well as grants that we had not counted on. Obviously, when we do the budget, we don't know if we're gonna be getting a grant. So we did quite, get quite a few grants. The grants that we got last year were the, uh, the bypass grant, planning grant, clean water grant, Nero Lake culvert grant, grant, and Fisher Road grant, which totaled two hundred ninety-six thousand eight hundred ninety-three dollars. And obviously, we had more than that in expenses, but we did not. We some of the expenses that we had put into the budget, we just did not put the revenue, not knowing what we would get. And also, we had insurance claims, which we received fifty-two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. The other thing that we did is we moved a couple of the um, fund balances that were bridge and road that were very old, and we moved them into the general fund. We've already used one of them up. But we're trying to use up some of these old reserves, and now we are keeping them in the general fund reserves. But that was also a boon to the um, fund balance for like $69,000. And then, the, uh, then later on that page, it does show the major additions for governmental activities were salt shed, paving and culvert projects, stormwater planning, and the Fisher Road lights, new highway equipment, and police vehicle. So we did actually add quite a, you know, quite a few assets. Uh, the other part is starting on page 16, and what this is is Exhibit G, which is the closest to what we have for a budget status report. Now, there's many reports in here. I know when Linda Mullen come in, comes in next time, she will just briefly tell you a lot of the different ones because they each kind of say the same thing, but maybe they're pointing out something different. But like I say, Exhibit G is the closest to our budget status report, so I thought that I would just climb, uh, show a few things on that. So on page 16, once again, as far as these grants, in the middle column uh, towards the top, that's where those grants appear and the amounts 
in each individual amount plus what we've received from uh, the insurance company. And then, see the next page, page 17, if you look at the listers and assessors, okay, um, the budget was 20340 the actual is 33581 Thirteen one hundred and thirty thousand dollars of that was when they did the mobile home okay. reevaluation. Okay, so that's why that was higher, and we didn't know that obviously at the time of budget. Uh, also, in meetings and elections, uh, we budgeted sixty five hundred. It was eight thousand sixty dollars, uh, and that was the additional school votes as when we merged. However, FY twenty, we did get back twenty one hundred and fifty six dollars. So that's the good news on that one. That will just even out. And then on page 18, under planning, um, other we we planned for a thousand dollars on the budget, and then we spent 54.30, and 44.10 of that was grant that we see, we're receiving the grant money on that one. Then on page 19 for the police, the wages were higher than we had anticipated. We did spend more for wages, uh, which means that the benefits also, Social Security, the pension benefits were higher. On page 20 of the police report, the equipment maintenance, we had budgeted 13000 We spent 19447 That was from, for some vehicle repairs, and we had a car accident uh, that was 2872 of which we did receive some insurance money on that. Uh, the other part on that page also is winter roads, which we had a very rough winter last year, so we did spend more on, um, on the wages as well as sand and salt. And think those are really the biggest changes that we had in the audit. <coughs> then, if you were to go, there's only one other section in the audit, and this is probably going to be the very last section that we were given. It starts with Town of Berlin, as Father Goes to the Valley, it's represented as a representation letter. Okay, let's go to the very end. And then there is like four or five pages down into it, there is like a spreadsheet. Okay, and that's what the spreadsheet is. On mm -hmm. spreadsheet there, but all this is saying is that they did not find any material um, discrepancies in the audit, which is always a good thing for us. Uh, then they do explain they had seven uh, changes that they made, there were seven entries, that's all that we had, and we're just explaining the entries after that. So I think the good news here is there's no material deficiencies, and that's what we're always looking for. Like I say, next time, um, I'm sure Linda will know, we'll go into this in more detail. But if you do have any questions on it, let me know, because I know it's a lot to go through, because it's a quite large report. Diane, so what, mm -hmm. when, after Linda comes, the board would, would be asking the board to accept it. Correct. And after that, you and I have to sign that letter. Yes. That, that one I just showed them. The right. The last, last right. representative letter. The letter that says that it, everything's our fault, it's not their fault. Right. <laughs> if they made a mistake, they're not It's our fault, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Was there yeah. grant <laughs> grant money for the special investigations unit that's not reflected in the police? He said, like, I mean, I think we were understaffed most of the year with the police force from what I've heard. That's money, the, is it 2300 22000 Oh. So that's not the one I was thinking of. What page is it, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Police. Page police and grants. Okay. Police and shows grants, yeah. favor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's still good. But it was due to high. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's one that, that offsets the revenues that we talked about early tonight. Yeah, yeah. We had the, and then we had the new furnaces in the garage. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. And, uh, and the new fuse box in the garage. Yes, because of the fire. Yeah. Be thankful that Reynolds was there. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> we were very lucky on that one. He went out to his truck and came back, and the wall was on fire. Yeah. So, like I say, if you have any questions, just email them to me. I'd be happy to look up anything for you. Thank you. Excellent. You were very talented. Okay. Great job. Okay. Down street. A discussion on housing project at the mall. She's going to escape. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to leave. Go, go. I wish I could go, but I can't. Um, so this is Allison. Eileen. Oh, Eileen. I get I get you and Allison mixed up. Eileen. I'm the Eileen Peltier, the executive yeah. director at yeah. Down Street. I met with most of you when yeah. you were here. And this is Thank Matt. You. Matt Moore. Moore. With Housing Vermont. We're partners, separate organizations, but partners. 
You remember you spoke with Eileen before mm -hmm. regarding the project <clears throat> yes. um, that they're working on over at the Berlin Mall. Right. So we, um, so the last time I came, it was really just to kind of introduce you to, to Downstreet, and of course we got into a few questions about the project. But it was, so now we're back to kind of talk about where we're at with the project mm -hmm. um, and talk about um, what we need from you all to make the project, to help the project go forward. But um, so, so just to explain mm -hmm. a little bit who Housing <coughs> Vermont is. So um, in the state of Vermont, we often, as local community development organizations, we often partner with Housing Vermont, which is a statewide affordable housing developer. They're also a, a syndicator of the tax credits, which is the main form of um, capital that comes mm -hmm. into these projects. So <coughs> because we're a small rural state, it's hard for us to have the capacity to do these kinds of projects um, on our own. We do some of them on our own, but the bigger projects like this one, which as you know is a pretty big project, um, including the child care and everything, we often partner with Housing right. Vermont, and we've been working with them for the past 30 years. They mm -hmm. worked with us on both French Block and Taylor Street in Montpelier. So. so so, I think, as I said, our, our goal tonight is really to just kind of be, this is where we're at, this is where we see the path forward, and this is where you know we see um, the need to intersect with you all and get support from you all. So I'm going to ask Matt to start mm -hmm. with just kind of the, what we've been sure. up to and kind right. of where the project is at this point, yeah. and then we'll talk about where we think it's going. Sure, thanks. And to, to riff a little bit on what Eileen said, the, the, the counter to uh, to you know her organization being you know being being local and them needing our help, it's it's hard for us to go into communities and do projects uh, alone. So you're familiar with Downstreet, you know them, and uh, it's always great to, to to partner and have that local connection. So the so the project um, we've been making progress. We have the property under contract. Uh, it's an option. Uh, for six months. Uh, we're going through due diligence right now, so we've done title work, um, environmental work, uh, we've hired an architect, uh, we have some concept design so we know what's feasible to build there for the, for the building. Um, I'm not sure what, how much detail you got into last time, but we're you know, looking at a, uh, you know, it's possible uh, you know, physically and financially it looks like to do something with about 30 units. Uh, there and then have the uh, the daycare uh, on the first floor is the general concept. Do you think that was at. two or three levels? Uh, three. Three levels. Three on top of right. So total three. of four. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three or or, yeah. or four. Could yeah. Right. Could could be four, depending upon the design. It it, it sure. might be three. So. And the size of the you know how many bedrooms sure. we end up with. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you haven't decided as far as how many one bedrooms or how many two bedrooms or. Yeah. That's still well. We, we we have a you know we have a conceptual design and a conceptual development pro forma right that that does have uh, you know a number of one bedrooms, how many two bedrooms, and three bedrooms, and I believe it's we're starting with and this is a starting point okay. uh, fourteen ones, <coughs> fourteen twos, and, and two three bedroom units. We know that that would physically fit in that space. Uh, we, we know about what that would cost. We have a preliminary cost estimate. Um, mm -hmm. So, just curious. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, there's a yeah. market study that's done. <coughs> right. There's a lot of factors that play into yeah. it, even just our experience in leasing up the Taylor Street mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. in Montpelier recently, you know, understanding on the ground how many people are interested in one bedrooms and two bedrooms and, and of course I think that's what I was interested in is kind of, are you targeting a certain segment or is it just to give an overall availability for different types of families so this particular building I mean all of our buildings are pretty general their general occupancy right so there are sometimes buildings that are senior projects um, we typically don't do that just because in a more rural market it just we want mm -hmm. that's not to say that we don't end up with a fair <coughs> amount of seniors in a lot of our projects um, in the Taylor Street projects an example of it I think mm -hmm. there's a fair number of seniors there um, so and but we are looking at this because the child care is there and of course there will be senior housing 
across the way as a great site to do family. So um, as an example, Taylor Street has no three bedrooms. We're planning on putting in a couple three bedrooms at this point right. in this building. Mm -hmm. um, it's a complicated mix of uh, thinking about the, the person's income, the restrictions on the units. There aren't a lot of people who can actually afford a three bedroom who are at the mm -hmm. right income level. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we pay somebody a lot of money to do a market study and really understand what the market will support. So our guess is probably pretty close. You yeah. know, as Matt said, <clears throat> it probably won't move much from that, 14.1, mm -hmm. 1, 14, 14.2, and a couple of yeah. three, but we're not going to, you know, put that in writing as a, a firm definite <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and building it on like the 40% the median income target or the 60% when you're doing the tax credits? It'll, it'll be a mix on the 60%. Um, however, the income targeting, there will, be, there will be a range. There will be a number of market units. Right. So 80% income up to 120% income, uh, a solid chunk at, at 60, and then there will, there will be some below that at 50% income and, and so forth. Yeah. Right. And some of that is, is dictated by the mix of funding. I mean, it's first yeah, no, the market. I talked to the syndicator on some projects that I was looking at. And so yeah. I, Sounds like you're familiar. Not, not as much as you, clearly, but I was just <laughs> curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good question. Yeah. And yeah. So I was curious how you were. Yeah, good question. Yeah, definitely. So we're. We're kind of working our way. We're kind of at the end of due, dil due diligence in the sense, like I said before, we, we know we can do this. We, there don't appear to be any threshold issues uh, that say, no, nope, this isn't going to work. We're going we're to walk away. There's still things we're going to have to work through, obviously, permitting and design and so on and so forth. Um, so, we're, so we're moving ahead. Um, the next phase really is kind of the permitting and, and, and funding or financing phase. So we will be submitting an application to VHFA for these tax credits. You'll hear that word a lot over the next year and a half or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long it takes to do this here. Uh, that application is due January 31st. Board meeting is in April. It's a once a year application, uh, highly competitive. We had to fight to get in the door uh, because there, an issue is the new town center and the timing of it. And they'd, mm -hmm. they'd like, to, they'd like to, to see that maybe our building isn't so much out ahead of that. So we've been having to work through that with some of these funding entities. So needless to say, we're going to be able to get in the game, submit this application. We'd like to to move into local permitting, I think, in the spring. Um, and continue in the summer through next would be Act 250. And the funding piece, it really depends on, on what happens in April with, with VHFA. That's going to dictate everything the, else, the timing. So yeah. I think they're basically, so they're basically two scenarios. So as Matt was mm -hmm. saying, it's either April of 2020 or April of 2021 mm -hmm. that we get the tax credit. So mm -hmm. if it's April of 2020, we would be able to, um, you know, what we call go to our closing where all the funding comes in, for, you know, we purchase the site and mm -hmm. start construction right after that. We would probably be able to do that in January of 2021. Mm -hmm. If we get bumped out a year, um, to April 2021 for this, this the, the VHFA tax credit capital is typically 60 to 70 percent of the all the total capital for the building mm -hmm. so it's obviously the most important piece yeah. that wouldn't put us back a whole year um, because of the timing of the other funding so mm -hmm. it would probably put us back six months so it'd probably be like summer June July of 2021 mm -hmm. so that's so that's our sort of time frame is we would be in the ground in 2021 if it's January or if Earlier. it's July. Yeah. That's kind of what our thinking is. So it's you're right. saying that mm -hmm. there's more than one funding source. There's many. many. So one of the, the but this is a big one. This is the sixty percent one. Am I hearing that right? Sixty to seventy percent of the total capital. I don't know if you know it, but it's around that. That's the average. Okay, you don't have to yeah. yeah. 
and this is the one that I was talking about the last time I was explaining. This is the, the source that comes actually in an IRS program. And um, in the state of Vermont, again, but the, this is the other role that Housing Vermont plays in the state. They, uh, because we're doing such small projects, so 30 units is big for us, right? Mm -hmm. But my colleagues in you know bigger states wouldn't even think of a project sure. that tiny, sure. right? And so national investors who want to buy these tax credits don't usually come to they Vermont yours, because yeah. they're too small. Yeah. So one of the things Housing Vermont does is they set up an equity fund. So they bring in a bunch of investors you know, together to get enough capital mm -hmm. um, to be used for this, this program across the state. And they've been doing that for the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. And it's a great benefit to us because we can't attract these national investors for these deals. We really need to be doing like 70, 80, 100 units to do it. Mm -hmm. So, so that, um, you know, and there, there is a, an amount of tax credit that each state gets. We get mm -hmm. the minimum, being a tiny small state, state minimum. We get the small state minimum. Yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. <laughs> Senator Leahy. Yeah. Um, so, and that is highly competitive. Yeah. Um, and so part of what I would think I explained the last time is that part of what what is really helpful is to have the support from the town that you actually want the project to happen and mm -hmm. that you are in some ways showing them uh, the funders that you want it right mm -hmm. and so then that moves into like the new town center designation and the types of things that that will be asking for your support on and that all affects the the story we're telling right um, as you know, Matt said, mm -hmm. you know they can't mm -hmm. come into communities and just develop. We don't do that either. That's mm -hmm. not our model. Right. And so we're, you know, you're part of the team too. Yeah. <laughs> part of the so the you're looking team. for some we're taking some the, sort you know, of the mechanism risk, to but... prove that the town is on the same side. Right. An agreement right. or some sort so of letter those, or something. Well, and some money at some point too, probably whether you get it through grants or whatever. But mm -hmm. you know, the new town center designation is is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So. You know, when we, we started this uh, project, we were unclear how they were going to interpret this, mm -hmm. that you don't have the Newtown Center designation yet. Um, and at this point, they seem to be drawing a relatively hard line around mm -hmm. that. So um, we'll, they will be looking to see the town progressing on it. We've mm -hmm. explained the timeline, you know, right. Dana, we've yeah. talked through yeah. all the, we know yeah. what your timeline is, we've had all those conversations, we've explained it to the funders. Um, but that needs to move forward. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so that's one thing. Um, mm -hmm. Things like the um, improvements um, to the street, like the sidewalk and mm -hmm. whatever we're going to, things that are actually in your new town center yes. um, designation, um, your new town center mm -hmm. planning, right? It will already include that. Um, so one of the things that they, that I think there's an interest in, in infrastructure, so I don't think any of those are surprises, mm -hmm. but it's showing some, when you get a new town center designation, it's a picture, right? There's a, yeah, <laughs> Dana's like, yeah, we, I we, only we, have one surprise so far, that, that, well, and a dollar sign in front of it. That was well, like, that's, yeah. so <laughs> it's, but showing that you have a path that you're actually gonna do the work, right? So <laughs> if, if you think about, um, I mean, to, to be blunt, their concern is that we, put this project here, we invest, you know, federal and state dollars we into a it, project yeah. and, yeah. you know, it's like a bridge to nowhere, right? It doesn't sure. like connect, yeah. there's no sidewalk. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Right. And this is the opportunity for, for them to push you to do those. So things, you're right? meaning, you're, you know, when you, you say money, money, you're the talking project about until investment. Until you commit to put the sidewalk in. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. straightforward, right? right? So it's, I don't think it's an investment that you weren't thinking no. about making no it's just um i want you know, to be sure of that yeah yeah mm -hmm. I'm, but it may be the timing and the <clears throat> you know some level of commitment and we're not exactly clear what they mean by the town committing to do that work mm -hmm. and i mean to be clear i don't want to blame this all on the funders we would be asking you for those things too we don't want to develop a project oh, that we're responsible i mean it makes sense mm -hmm. to do it right um and then the other the other pieces, and we had talked to Tom about this, was the connection between the housing and the school, mm -hmm. which unfortunately has some, you know, mm -hmm. ravine in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and um, we had, he had talked about the conservation committee, mm -hmm. maybe looking at that, and and we have been in touch with uh, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, who is one of our funders who does housing and conservation mm -hmm. around, you know, are there grants and potential to do that? Because there's mm -hmm. a desire 
to see that connect. I mean, it makes great yeah. sense. And again, it's this sort of using their, they're using this opportunity that they've got right now to sort of push the town to make commitments to do those things. And it, you know. Tom is working on a grant right now that the governor just released last week, maybe, mm -hmm. um, about a path and bridge. There. To, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be obviously fantastic, yeah. especially if the focus is to have families and to have the the childcare on the yeah. ground floor. Right. It makes perfect sense, and to connect to the. I mean, the kids, could, the childcare kids, could walk over and you know sure. use the fields yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And obviously, it makes sense. So, those are the kinds of things that. Um, am I forgetting anything? Tax well, stabilization. We've got our, maybe. We have a list here. Yeah. BCDP. Um, right, so we had talked about the BCDP. And Dana knows that world. <coughs> yeah. So yeah. that's the community development block grant that is required to come funnel through a municipality. So you need to um, be willing to, you manage know, it. submit that application yeah. and manage it. We mm -hmm. we can help with the management of it, but you have somebody you have a very knowledgeable town yeah. administrator, so that. That makes it all. No, I don't know about that, but yeah. Well, you, you're um, not afraid of it. So, well, maybe I've that means you don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you've done it before. Yeah. Um, it's just a you talked about, you know, you get my interest when you talk about taxes. I love mm -hmm. taxes. Um, you talked about tax stabilization. Mm -hmm. Are you asking, do you anticipate paying full boat taxes? Or, I didn't think so. No, um, so you asked me this the last time. I did, and you yeah, know yeah. I was going to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To remind the. To, yeah, I mean. So I'm just wondering, what types of arrangements have you done in other projects, uh, as it's, far as the tax status goes? It's not really an arrangement, right? You mm, want to explain the, sure. the act? Yeah, <laughs> the we, we, you know, I work all over the state for you know, for many years, and that is probably the number one question mm -hmm. that that I get, that we get, uh, for 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 new development, um, and. Uh, it's not entirely straight straightforward. Um, the the assessed the assessed value of properties, affordable housing projects like this, where there are restrictions on it that limit the rent that we can take in, and so forth. The assessed value is done by a state formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we have another entity that does that in town. Yeah. So we know. Yeah, yeah there's one we other. Know. The art. The yeah. Um, we know. What mean. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. What so. Is it? Hill. Um, this is the RD property. Forty. Yeah. Oh, you have a rural something? development property. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it would yeah. be like that. It's on. Um, I can't think of the name of the street. Yeah. Addison, Addison Drive. I think. Addison. Yeah. 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 So that formula. Yeah. yeah. So. So that's kind of the thing. That we're right. Doing. So the assess. So the assessed value is. It's going to be assessed based on the income that the property brings in, whereas, uh, you know. A market rate property that has 30 units that can charge 100% market rent for everything, they're going to be assessed based on the you know, the capitalization rate, right? So how much mm -hmm. how much income the property brings in. Our property's got 30 units. Maybe six of them are going to be market rate, and like before, a big chunk of them are going to be in the middle, and then some are going to be low. So our property is going to be <coughs> assessed less than. Um, Got it. The net profit. So we will pay the same rate, and we will pay taxes. It is privately owned, um, but it's a different formula than a yeah. property that's free to do whatever. Okay. It's unrestricted. One of the reasons why I, I was perked up is Eileen had said something about tax stabilization, which means yes. something different to me. That is it, right. You know. So well, right. So I. I think at it, 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 this point, it looks like it would it could be very helpful <laughs> mm -hmm. to the property. Again, this is very early, looking at a development pro forma that's kind of modeling. Okay, what is this thing going to look like in two or three years when it's up and running, and the expenses and the income and, and et cetera? If we were able to phase in the property mm -hmm. taxes over five years. Mm -hmm. um, that could be very helpful yeah. for us to get on our feet and be able to maintain it and get off to a good start. <laughs> um, so as I had talked about, so one of 
Matt spends a lot of time driving around the state, but he also spends a lot of time like this with a computer, you know, modeling out the next 30 years, basically, mm -hmm. because the way that these, these projects are done, um, I think I explained this a little bit, but the, the essentially, you know, we're allowed to increase our rents you know, based on HUD requirement, but typically about, you know, 1% and the cost of living goes up 3%. So, so we're sort of like, you know, mm -hmm. it's fatally flawed from the get-go, yeah. so you have to upfront project all this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we do such extensive projections um, for, you know, the tax credit period of 15 years, but also up mm -hmm. to 30 years. So his yeah. initial numbers are, are, I guess, indicating it would be helpful to have some level of tax it Yeah, it, def it definitely um, But it's something that we don't have to figure out right now. Right. I mean, it's a yeah. process, so right. I'm and just, we don't I'm know. just trying to we understand. Don't know if, if we need it. I'd, well, I mean, if you want to offer it, we'll take it. But we don't know that that's like a, we have to have We're it. not at that day. point. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but we want to, I think the, the, the purpose um, of, well, being here tonight and talking to you and maybe in working towards some type of a, a, a letter of intent, a memorandum of, of agreement about all this stuff is to get it all out on the table so that we don't do all this stuff and then have us come well, in I again and go back, oh, by the way, we also need this and this. And you know, probably we haven't will talked have for a back. while and I knew you were working on yeah. things, so I appreciate right. you coming in. And, yeah. and I think that, you know, so so we used a, you know, a letter of intent in mm -hmm. Barry and in Montpelier. And it's, I think, a really helpful sort of conceptual guide for you mm -hmm. all as, so then when we do come back and three months and ask for something, you say, oh, right, we talked, you're at least mm -hmm. introduced to these different ideas. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, basically, it's what I had said earlier, it's that you're a willing partner in all of this, and you yeah. understand that you have a role to play, <coughs> you know, to, yeah. to, for this to be successful. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I think we're kind of, well, maybe we should stop. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Is it making sense? Sort of. <laughs> um, so what you want from the town right now is just a letter of intent to say we are going forward with the, with the uh, town center? or. So there's a few things. So we actually did draft something, but we thought we would take this conversation in stages, <coughs> I Well, think, I thought right? it was better for the board for you right. to have this first step yeah, right. rather than yeah. to no, present yeah, them I with a... No, I think that a, makes sense. You know, so the things yeah. that are in it, though, are just sort of this idea that we're a partnership working on this together, mm -hmm. the new town center, uh, that you're moving forward. You know, it's not that you promised to get it, or right? it's just, right. you know, you're yeah. doing what you need to do for the new mm -hmm. town center. There's some language about the street improvements, the mm -hmm. pedestrian mm -hmm. access to the school infrastructure. Supporting the VCDP application. Um, supporting mm -hmm. the VCDP <coughs> application, which is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's mostly it. I may be missing something. But the ne so the next step is for us to, I guess, give you that, mm -hmm. have you have some time <coughs> with it, you know. Um, I have the draft. That. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and I'll I'll share that with the board. Right, and it was just a lot of words that, but basically but, come down to what I said. <laughs> right, but I wanted to hear it from you exactly what it was. So. Yeah. And how far into the future um, would we be looking at whether to phase in the taxes over a five-year period? Mm -hmm. that you spoke of that right. was intriguing to me can you elaborate on that yeah in terms of when we might mm -hmm. need to ask for that right. yeah that will come before soon before we're ready to close and start construction when our construction lender and we also have a, a permanent loan that's going to go on this mm -hmm. and the investor when when they underwrite Mm -hmm. underwrite the steel to make sure that, that it all pencils out. So under kind of our two possible scenarios, the earlier scenario of starting earlier in 2021, mm -hmm. that would mean that we would be, uh, that would that would put us in the fall, mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. of 2020 mm -hmm. uh, is when we would be... Um, trying to wrap that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to back up a second, so yeah. the other piece that Matt is is <clears throat> touching on is that we have all of us as partners making this happen, the developers sort of managing our long-term risk and thinking about it in terms of that, and then we have the funders 
who have a viewpoint of it, but then it's the investor. So somebody has to want the, so it's not as simple as, oh, I give you some money and I get my tax credit, because mm -hmm. it's an IRS program and it mm -hmm. is ridiculously complicated, to be honest, and it requires, so they, we have to meet certain marks each year in, for, mm -hmm. in order for them to get their tax credit. So they care about the operating budget of this project, of course. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, so they're looking at that level of detail. They're not just like, oh, that looks like a nice building, and I get my tax yeah. credit if I invest in it. So they're they're all over this too, in the same way that the funders are and we mm -hmm. are. So there's like three different parties that really have to yeah. agree: the mm -hmm. developers, the funders, and the investor. Mm -hmm. So it's it's. Yeah. Complicated, but and, and the the investors are works. mainly mainly banks um, who have uh, footprints you know, here in Vermont. Um, you know, most of the Vermont banks have been acquired. Mm -hmm. I think there's one one left. I forget which one it is. It's local, yeah. Yeah, um, yes. but all the the banks that you all have your bank accounts <laughs> are those are the investors in this fund. Right. Um, nationally, Fann Fannie Mae. Fanny, Freddie, mm -hmm. um, they they might be an investor. We're talking to them and so forth. Okay. So, um, and it's those same banks that will also um, be the lender for the permanent financing and the construction financing. So, um, so when we speak of the so they're an important relationship. So it's, it's yeah. It's kind of trying to balance all of those interests, right? Make sure everybody's happy at some moment, and it does happen. But it's that's a lot of what Matt's doing is juggling those different um, needs and trying. So what he's saying is his initial view of of that projection for the next thirty years is mm, it would be good if there was a little less expense in the budget, right? Mm -hmm. In the from the viewpoint of uh, a potential investor, but we don't know the details of that of yet. Yeah. So. So mm -hmm. better to put that concept out here now than to come after we've all been working really hard at the 11th hour and say to you, you've got to do this or we're not going to have a deal. Right. We're trying to yeah. you know, put it out there now. Yes, exactly. So my thought is, the next, so I did just really quickly look at this. I think we've touched on all the things that's in the language here. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think anything will be a surprise. Um, so I think the next step would be just for you to share the language and we could you yep. know, come back when you think it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so initially, this is a letter of intent, and then as sort of time goes by, we're hoping by late <coughs> spring to have a little bit more of a official commitment. This is just you know, well. I think my concern, understand. one of my biggest concerns, is that as you know, we're 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 kind of hanging on, just waiting to get our application in, and. Mm. I'm going to be very positive and say it's going to be approved, but I don't know that yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. well, it um, and so <laughs> the board couldn't guarantee. No, no, no. You know, yeah, no. Um, and it won't course. say guarantee that you get right. it. It yeah. will be that you get it submitted. Yeah. We, all, we, all, we all share that risk together. Okay. We yeah. understand yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if it doesn't get approved, it, uh, we'll just delay things a little bit. Right. You'll get there. Yeah. You know. Oh, I think it will happen. Yeah. Just. Yeah. yeah. And I think it will happen next fall. But. Yeah. If we say it enough, it will be so. <laughs> <laughs> it's my philosophy in life. <laughs> you kind of have to have that philosophy yeah. as a yes. developer. Yeah, yeah. We're doing this. We're yeah. doing yeah. this project. Yeah. Yeah. Everything <laughs> forward at once, and mm -hmm. all the trains um, will meet at the station. And I, we'll all be happy at that one moment in time. Yes, right, right, right. right. Um, and I'll just brief, briefly mention where the child care conversation yeah, is yeah. going. It's going very well. Um, we have, uh, it's looking like we're going to do 90 slots which is really incredible and hugely valuable to the success of this project with funders to be, because mm -hmm. it's, it's addressing two really important needs in our community. It is just the dream location, if you think about it. You can work in Montpelier, <coughs> but I mean, right in Berlin, you know mm -hmm. there's, there's thousands of people working at the hospital and Blue Cross Blue Shield, I mean, within half a mile. So great location. Um, it's in Central Vermont Medical Center has been working with us, Blue Cross Blue Shield, some other of the smaller employers as well, um, very interested in this happening. And our, our, um, we are working with Let's Grow Kids, which is a statewide entity that's trying to develop and to develop um, 
childcare and what they're recognizing is that these types of projects are actually more likely to be viable for the long term. First of all, you're building a new building, so you get it right, and you know the plugs are where they're supposed to be, and all the you know it's designed well, right? Um, and then the scale matters, right? So having a so so at this point, we have Capstone um, has is not in writing, but they verbally have committed that they would like half of the slots. So it would be Head Head Start type programming for 45 kids, and the other 45 kids. I mean, CVMC would like probably all of them, but that's not mm -hmm. how we will do it. But where mm -hmm. there's no real concern from anybody that the need the need's absolutely there. So we are working through a process. We're hiring a consultant to do the business model for that, and then there will be an RFP for potential operators of mm -hmm. the childcare. That will be this process <coughs> will be overseen by Let's Grow Kids and Capstone and <coughs> Downstreet, along with this committee that involves CVMC and, and Blue Cross Blue Shield and so. So we've had lots and lots of support and interest and in, from the business community in making sure that the child care is successful. So good. Any more questions? Thank you very much for coming. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good to see you all. Yeah. Yeah. So let us yeah. know yeah. when you want us to come back and talk about the LOI or, you know. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. I will. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Black Road Power and Dana? Yes. The Dalsa here. Tim is here. Um, we've been talking about Black Road Plowing. And I think it was we're plowing the road to Y. Am I? Is that? Right? Yes. And so the, the doubts would like the road to be plowed narrower. Um, I've talked to the highway department about it, and it's an issue with their plowing operation. And I guess I'll let him explain what that issue is as far as changing trucks during the plow route. I'm plowing it with the little truck. So, so, so there was some confusion about what the little truck means. I think that's the confusion, yeah. It's not the pickup. That's okay. It's the six wheeler instead of a ten wheeler. Okay. And for him to back down in the air to sand it, because I don't sand, because when I'm plowing, I got salt on. And you know, very, very seldom do I sand unless somebody breaks down and we get way behind in an ice storm. I help him because I'm not plowing now. And for him to back down in the air, it's got to be wide enough for him to back down in there. And um, what's the right of way? That's what I want to know. What's what's the what's the town's policy with the right of way there? Um, my understanding was that it was the gravel surface that was already there. No, that's not the right of way. The oh, town's right of way. Oh, the town's right of way is much much larger. Right. Okay. Than yeah. That. That's much bigger. Bigger. Two rods. Yes, two, two rods. So that's thirty three rod. feet. Yeah. So if I'm plowing at 17 feet, that's way less than 33 feet. So, so clearly, I mean, we have the the town has the right. It is the right of way. Um, uh, however, when when we had talked about the little truck, I thought I thought you had meant that no, we, we don't pick up. We don't put the plow on the pickup unless it's a major storm, a big storm, and this way, if somebody breaks down, we can. They can get back here, get in the pickup, and go and at least open up roads that are, you know, if you get eight, ten inches of snow, and people can't home. Or Mark comes over and gets it with big storms and plows this yard here for me, and he plows some other stuff around for me so that it just frees me up from Mark. Mark here? Yes. Okay. Police officer. He's always used the loader before, but it's kind of hard to do it with a loader over here. So. We have the plow now on for the pickup, so he comes over and gets it and plows this out. So that saves me a lot of time because I have to take time in the morning to get this opened up so that the help can get in and people can get in here. So that's what we use the pickup plow for. So, so what if we just used the uh, the, the six wheeler to do the to do the plowing and did not sand it? Well, 
Uh, so I, I well, mean, that, how, my, how, my theory is is if the town has the right of way, we have the right to maintain the right of way, and we're not maintaining the right of way because it's 33 feet. We're only doing 17. And supposedly we, the thing of it was, is we had 16 six, so that's one rod. And if I plowed it 17 feet, well, I don't know what to say. Because when we decided this thing with with the dirt part up there, it was 16.6. So are you asking if they continue to plow it with the six wheel, which is what they're using mm -hmm. right now, and they just don't just don't don't don't, don't, don't take it. the bigger truck down to yeah. sand? Well, the only thing what are you going to do in a nice storm? Right. Your sheet so ice. they'll uh, they'll have to manage the sanding. Well, I think the. I mean, I was looking at some of the maps and how those, I know, in, I believe in one of your emails, you, the fiberglass poles that you had out there, that was an issue, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the edge of the permit that was given by the select board to walkers two years ago. Right. So I think that permit to Josh is not in place for the maintenance in the winter if the town's maintaining it. So we, we don't disagree so, at all with Tim. Uh, it's it's actually the town can do whatever they want to do in the right of way. That's the way it works. So in the right of way is three rods, not two. So it's forty nine something right. feet. So there's okay. no argument there. When we came to talk about plowing, we talked about coming to an agreement where we would take the little truck down and plow it. Tim was very proud that he could that all the trucks have angled blades that they were very able to get into tiny spots. And then as soon as the first storms come, we've got this enormous swath down through the road. Two people live down there. There's nobody in the apartment. There's very little traffic up and down there, if any at all, other than uh, two people coming and going occasionally. It does not need to be 17 feet wide. We don't know why we're here. We made an agreement, um, and, and we're just getting frustrated. I, I mean, I, well, you don't think that it's I just, am? Well, I know. You're stuck in the middle. I'm stuck in the middle. I'm stuck. I mean, it's, it's the agreement that they made should have never happened. And I said that at the meeting. It, we have a right of way. We have the right to maintain our right of way. So we're not maintaining our right of way. It's 33 feet or 49 feet. And we're away from that. So, I mean. So. So and when I go down in there, I go down in there most of the time, I come off the cross down and go down in and my blade's angled. But you, when I get down to your driveway, I normally straighten the blade out and just push straight down through with the blade and the wing is just getting rid of the snow. I mean, if you don't want to sand it, that's fine. I don't care. That's, that's up to you, totally up to you guys. But well, that'll make it uh, dangerous for your plow truck to go down there and a sheet of ice you're going to drive your small dump truck well, down I'm not, there. I'm not going down in there in an ice storm. Yeah. I mean, so it's it's going to depend on what happens after the ice storm. Like this last ice storm we had was some nasty. But the next day it warmed up enough and the roads went back to dirt so we didn't have a nice build up on our roads. Like lots of times that don't happen. Usually it, you get it warms up enough the rain and then the roads turn to a sheet of ice and then it gets cold. Well this last time it got up in the 50s and it thawed everything out so all the roads went back to dirt. Yeah so when we talked about this we said okay so nothing's going to change the the permitted driveway is going to stay the same uh, it's going to be everything's going to be the same uh, except that the town's going to take over the plowing from the walkers. And everybody said, yep, 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 that's what we're doing. Well, and, and and it's not I wasn't anything here. like... I wasn't here for that. Meeting. It's nothing like uh, what what we talked about. You were here for the first meeting and... Not you, not when there was anything said about... Well, I said about plowing it with the small truck that we went. But there was nothing said about how wide we had to plow it or nothing. That was the meeting that they voted for the town to, to plow it, which was in October, and I was not here, and neither was Dana. I don't think the motion was for any specific width on it wasn't. that. There was yeah. no width. No, in the we didn't go into yeah. detail nope. on the width. Where there, there was a looking for the that implication could. that you guys said we could plow that road, we could plow it narrow, we can move the blade all over the place that we want to. Um, it was implied. 
we agreed. We 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 thought that was a decent uh, a, a decent uh, uh, agreement that we all decided on. It was a, it was a, seemed like a thing to go. And then the first the first file, we were like, holy jeez, the thing is like a you know, landing it's, strip. It's seventeen foot. I, so well, I know, I, and, but it doesn't need to be that for two people. Well, it does. That's for, the point. It does. I'm not blaming you. Well, what I'm, I'm saying, saying to you is exactly. it has to be that, that wide to stand um, So, so how, how, how wide are you imagining? I, I mean, so... In an ideal... Width, the gravel width has worked for the past 20 years. Okay, and, Which, and, and how wide is that? That's is 10, 12 10 feet? feet or 12 feet or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, and, and it, it, you know, and, and uh, the... The driveway, you know, we're, we're not asking it to do anything different. Narrow it up, three, four feet, two, three feet. Don't hit, a, don't hit the little sticks, you know, because they're at the edge of the thing. It's kind of made as a, as a marker, and well, it's, you know, it's the edge of your lawn is what it is. No, yeah, it's not it's, the edge of the lawn. It's inside. It's where I measured, uh, and where you put the little blue flag. Well, the only, your only problem is, 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 for me to go in there with just a plow and plow it. I'm driving in the snow with my dual wheels in the back because the cloud's only 11 foot wide. So it's, I don't know what to say. As I said, my email, got a right so away, and I think it's its time that we maintain our right of ways. We got other problems too. We had the same thing down on Point Ridge Road. The guy's got stakes all up on his lawn down here, and he's all mad because I plowed him over. Well, the snow's got to go somewhere, so what am I going to do? Leave the snow three feet out on the blacktop? It's because he's got stakes on the edge of his lawn. Tim, what's the width of the blade on the... 11 foot. And so you plow when you go down, well, that's the six ton that you're, you've been using? The, the six wheeler. The it's six 11 wheeler. foot blade on the front of it. 11 foot. So right now when you go down through, you plow down, you turn around and you plow up. Yep. Well, I can plow down with the plow, and then when I come up out of there, I'm going to plow up. You don't own the land on the other side of the road, right or wrong? Right or wrong? We don't that, own that. Okay, right. well then I'll wing it coming out on the other side. The only problem is I get the tree down here. That big maple is in the way. So, so I can't I can't drop my wing until I get by that big maple. So my question was, do you have to plow both directions? I mean, if you... Well, what I'm saying is, is if I go down in there with my plow, I can just plow right along the edge of your little stakes that you got there. And if we get a lot of snow, then we're going to run into problems because I'm not going to have anywhere else to push the snow. Mm -hmm. You can only push so much in front of you when it's a big storm. It's never been a problem for yeah, 20 never, years we've been never, there. Never has been a problem. Well, it's a pickup. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not a dump truck. The pickup's not going to drive in the, in the snow where he's, because it's plow. It all falls back down in the road. Why do you think we go around with a wing on the grader and wing back snow banks? Because you've got to keep the, the banks pushed back so that you got your road surface. So the, the problem here is is that you're you're plowing 11 feet, which is the width of the blade, mm -hmm. and then you're winging it back to keep it out of the from falling back into the roadway. There's, well, it hasn't winged it back yet. Yes, I do. I run my wing down in there every time. Every time. Yes. So. What's it, is that what's getting? It's just a matter of. Uh, yeah, that's what's going over the stake is the wing. Yeah, so it's just a matter of keeping the road clear. The only problem the we got is down where that big maple is. Yeah. It, 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 they got a stake right across from the maple. You can just barely get through there. Did you share the letter with the board from the fire department? No, not yet. That's another subject there. Yeah. Does that pertain to this? No. Okay. No. It does pertain to the width. Brains, sir. Plowing. Well, yeah, you know what? We've got to decide yeah, this yeah. plowing. I can't do this. Okay. No, I, I, I don't want either. It's getting either. a little old. Yeah. It's, it's getting really old. Let me tell you. Well, I mean, we've we never brought these meetings. We always show up. Let me, to, let me ask you. What, what's, the, what's the problem with the snow on the lawn? It's not just snow. What is it? Uh, you're, you're tracking over there. The lawn's getting torn up. It, it, uh, there's already. I haven't line. gone. I haven't gone past the state. There's already a line of debris. Well, starting to it would, it would seem to me well, come over to my house next spring and see what the town does to my lawn. It would, it would seem to me that in order for the for the drive for the for the twelve foot uh, width to be cleared, you're going to have to wing back the snow either up or down. It doesn't matter which one to me. But we can't be having a truck get down in there and not being able to take and turn around or come back up. 
So I would say that... Is that, just a second, is that maple tree dead? Yeah, because of the, I've been pushed so far close to it from these guys with their stakes and stuff. Oh, that get out of here. You're, you're right. out of your mind. Well, who owns the tree? The we who built the road? Who killed the trees? No, actually, you own the tree. No, actually, it's actually on, on that Colgan's land. land. Yeah. Let's keep the corn. No, it's, yeah. on, it's on Colgan's oh, land. The it's on Hogan's, but it's in the town right away. Correct. Yeah. Well, if we could get rid of that tree, that would solve a lot of problems. I'm the tree warden. You can get rid of the tree. So, uh, what about you can pull a stump still? Well, I don't think I could do it this year. This stump, but yeah. I mean, well, if I, would, I could get if I could get somebody in there and we can get it cut right flat to the ground, that would be a big help. Because if the problem we got is is when Timmy backs down in there with his his ten wheeler, yeah, the wing is on that side, yeah, and he's clobbered that tree twice with the wing. And we don't need to smash a truck up. No. Because he's trying to stay not backing over the stakes. The stakes. I got gotcha. you. Well, if that tree is dead, then it's a, just a matter of uh, safety anyway to bring it down. Well, I can get um, Mike Marshfield logging and yeah. does all of our tree cutting. Definitely yeah. seems like a viable solution. I can get a hold of him and see if it's something that he wants to tackle this time of year. Yeah. That doesn't do anything. Well, how does that solve it? Yeah, well, because then, right. then, then I can just plow down in there and stay off the, their stakes. I mean, the snow's going to go on their lawn, no matter what. And then when I come out, I can wing coming out, and, and because I can't because of the trees there That's okay. until I get past. The push tree. to the opposite side of the driveway. Push, push the snow towards Bruce. <laughs> Well, the thing there is Does if that, that tree is dead, it should probably no. come down. I mean, I can, if, if the tree's not there, I can push it back enough on that side to, to get it out of there. Well, I would say, see what you can do, Tim. <coughs> well, we're talking about this. Who dug the trench across the road? I right. Okay. It's not a trench. Yeah, it is. When I went down in there the first time to plow, my plow caught it and it flipped my plow right over onto the ground because it tripped it. Two you, you have no, you have no two right. Two inches deep. No, it's more than two inches deep because my plow caught it. No, it's two inches deep. Okay. okay. Well, you have no right to do it. You don't have any right to dig a trench across the road. There's a bump there. I can feel it when I'm coming in and out of there. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be more than two inches deep. Well, I don't know what you can do about the trench now. That well, the I know that. Down. I can go up there and put some gravel in there and fill it in. No, we're not going to be doing that. But if you can get down in there and get that, uh, get it so you can turn around and come back and get the snow out of the way. Do what you can. Well, and as far as, as far I'll, as... I'll, I'll get a hold of Mike tomorrow. Yeah. As far I'll as other material getting thrown up in the snow, everybody that has, lives, has a road frontage suffers that problem. Oh, well, I know they do. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, see what you can do, Tim. Anything else on this issue? So, what are we doing with the sand? Not sanding it, or were you sanding it? Well, if you if you get down in there, you can turn around. I would say sand it. Well, I can turn around down there because I can plow out onto his lawn. I guess it is. Yeah. It's frozen now. I, well, I skimmed it off the first couple of times, and then it froze up. So I can but, push but, the snow but back. But if you're able to come back up, wing it, you're going to be able to get the you're going to be able to get the other truck with the sand back down there, right? Yeah, if I get rid of that tree. Yep. Okay. There you go. Let's go. Get her done. Yeah, I'm gonna call Mike tomorrow and have him come in if he if he find out if uh, the neighbors that own the tree want the wood or you have to chip it or whatever you have. To I know he's he's gonna chip probably all the brush. I know he he chipped a lot when he cut a bunch out there on the pond for me a while back. He chipped it. Okay, anything else on this issue? Hearing none. Let's move on. Thank you, Tom. Thank you all. Uh, Change of select board meeting day. Dana? Justin asked me to put that yes, on. Yes, I asked him. <laughs> if he would put that on, we'd touch briefly in it in the round table, and I would like to see if we can change the meetings from Thursdays, and I'm open to a lot of other days. That's I am open Sunday to other days as well. Thursday. So the only day is Wednesday. Wait, yeah, it's my daughter's meeting, and that's so, why so it got changed. So if we change them back to Mondays like we had them before? I'm fine with Monday. I'm totally Tuesday. fine with Monday. Monday, like, yeah. I'm great with Monday. Absolutely. So maybe switch it back to switch it back to Monday. How does that work for you, Dave? 
Okay. <laughs> that what would about be me? me? It's all about me. <laughs> so, 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 so maybe we have our January second <laughs> meeting at the regular. The regular yeah, I was going to suggest that maybe you get give it a month uh, before you change. Maybe do Sorry, it first. It? Yeah, maybe you do it the first meeting in February. Good point. Yeah, you know, so we meet on the, the, on the, the and second, we'll announce it. Yeah, the second and the sixteenth, and then starting mm -hmm. with February third. Yeah, February third. Yeah. So take in, uh, see if we can get the website changed. We can do that. We put it on front page forum. We can do that. Mm -hmm. We're so Sorry. cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the usual things to do. <laughs> um, are you going to do a motion on it? Um, I move that we change to uh, the, our regular meetings to um, the first and third Mondays of every month starting in February. I second the motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Time administrator's report, Nina. Well, I don't have much of a report. We did have. Um, town staff come today we had lunch together and it was it was nice um, Roberta Haskin bought bought the lunch for us That's wonderful. and so it was very nice it was very casual um, but I think we had a good time and yeah, other than good time when it's free. you know <laughs> free was always good um, other than that um, I don't think I have anything going on that's not a, on my list that I'm making up. <laughs> checking it twice. Checking it twice. Checking it twice. It is that season. That's right. Okay, Justin, round table. Nothing. Flo? No. Jeremy? Okay. Angelina? Mm -hmm. uh, any executive session? No. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah.